Good morning, class. Welcome to your daily uh, current affair class on the paper Hindu. So, uh, till yesterday we were having classes on uh, afternoon sessions from 3 to 4. So, I we uh, plan to shift it to the morning. So, every day around from 9 or 19 you will be having this current affairs session for an hour and then other classes will commence. Okay, fine. So, let us see what are the important articles today from paper Hindu. So, quarter 3 GDP growth slows down to Good morning, Kriti Singh Kriti. I think my voice is audible. Good morning, Burhan. I hope my voice is audible to you. Fine. So, let us see today's articles. Just a moment. Fine. So, here. So, slows down to 4.4 percent and the data upgraded. So, every quarter the level of GDP growth will be updating and at the end of this physical year or fiscal year your entire growth of GDP will be mentioned. So, as of now, thank you Burhan for confirming. So, as of now they have mentioned that in this particular quarter it has been decreased. So, earlier it was around 6.3 percent and now it was in September it was around 6.3 percent and now it has slowed down to 4.4 percent. So, that is about this article. Who has released this data is that NSO national statistical officer for this particular quarter they have mentioned that yes it has been slowed down a bit for this quarter, but at the end we will be estimating around 6.4 percent as a growth. So, they are expecting. So, they are expecting a total of amount of growth expansion to 7 percent of GDP this fiscal year. So, that is about this article. Next. China sending FM foreign minister to India for G20 meet, first high profile visit in a year. So, in this particular year, this is a high, yeah, thank you Kriti for confirming, this is a high profile visit to India. So, we have seen that in the last year, in the previous year, we started banning Chinese apps, Chinese applications, so which we felt that it would be threatening our uh, country's cyber spaces. So, it might be posing some threat to data or information of our country. So, we have banned certain apps, applications of China country, so that it will be protecting our country's data. Okay. And after that recently the other update was Russia's delegate has mentioned that it is a high time that India should be sitting together in a table conference or in a round table conference with China to discuss about what is actually happening and in the border. So, in our border issues especially in the area of LAC or near in Arunachal Pradesh. So, what are actual border issues? So, we have to sort it out. So, it is a high time for uh, upcoming or the growing economies like India and strong one of the strongest eco economies in India sorry in world like China. So, we have to sit together and speak about our issues. So, we need to sort it out. This said Russia and in continuum recently in the last week we have seen that the countries delegates have met. So, mutually uh, where India's delegate and Chinese delegate we have met together and they discussed about what can be the possibilities to sort out our border issues. So, now in the same light there is another article where now this year we have G20. So, we are uh, taking the presidency for G20. So, different countries will be visiting our country. So, as of now the foreign ministries of different countries are visiting before this particular schedule. So, that they will be discussing about the possibilities. So, what can be done in the meeting for that they will be discussing earlier fine. So, here as of this article, China on Tuesday announced a visit to for a visit of its foreign minister Kin Gang to India the week for this week of G20 meeting for the first high level visit for the in India almost after any year. So, this will be high level visit. See here, Kin in the an invitation of India's external minister attend this particular meeting on March 2nd. So, they will be attending this particular meeting. So, what are their interests? So, their focus will be on see so china stands ready to work with all parties including india to ensure they will send a positive signal on multilateralism food energy security and developmental cooperation so we have so when they come here they are going to discuss all these particular topics so different countries are going to come and in 26th working committee a working mechanism for the consultation coordination of india border in Beijing will be marked the first such talks in person since 2019. So, we are not only meeting with the G20, we are also focusing upon 
settling our border issues with China, especially in the areas of LAC and near Arunachal Pradesh areas. Okay, fine. So that is about this article. So different other countries are also visiting as part of this only. So yeah, next article. Let's move on to next article. Local ones skipping. All these are local news. Fine. Local news. Local editorials. There is something again important. So, what does this article say? So, currently, the legislature facing disqualifications can't attend floor tests. So, Supreme Court has told that the legislator whoever is under the edge of this anti-defection law. So, you know that defection can be given to these ministers, to the executives. So, people whoever are in this particular defection procedure, then they cannot go for floor test. So, what is this floor test? To prove their confidence, legislatures will go to, in the parliament, they will go for this floor test to prove their confidence. Okay. So, as of now, that article was not mentioned in local newspaper, but yeah, in e-paper it was mentioned. So, currently, this article says that Supreme Court Chief Justice, Mr. D.Y. Chandrachud has told that if they are going to any, if they are in the process of this defection, so that particular minister or MLA, so it can be MP or MLA, who is with this defection, who is facing the anti-defection law to participate in the floor test has no meaning. Because if they are participating in a floor test, then if they prove as, if they are proving themselves as confident, then what is the actual purpose of defection? Defection is something if they lose confidence in the party, right? If they shift, there are certain constraints where they cannot shift from the same party where they have won. So here, the defection is about losing confidence in that particular party. So floor test is among the all other people. So it is uh, not necessary or it is completely baseless to come to have floor test when there is a standard allegation of defection. So, that says your Supreme Court Chief Justice D.Y. Chanachul can be added. So, whenever he is accused as an executive, then having a test as a legislature is not necessary. That says this article. Understood? Understood? Okay, fine. I hope that is clear. Next. See ya. So, if, if you want, you can just see important article that is why, okay. So, yeah. On the other hand, you say somebody who defects causes split within the party. So, if he is under defection, that showcases that that particular person is trying to split, the, split within the party. So, at the same time, you say that even if the person is labeled to be disqualified, in the meantime, he can participate in the trust vote. So, floor test is something which is related to his trust in the people but not defection is completely where it is leading to the split in the internal party. So, both cannot be mentioned at the same time. So, if he is on the defection, then he, should, he will not be in the position to take a floor test. Even if this is qualified, this will not be qualified. So, it can be under the acquisition of or yeah, uh, alleg allegations of defection. So, that is about this article. Important. So, your anti-defection law is mentioned in your 10th schedule, okay, important. Next, 10th schedule of Indian constitution, next. So, yeah, New Delhi welcomes foreign ministers as I told you. The first news was about China's foreign minister is going to come for this particular G20 meeting to have different uh, meetings or to have certain debates and discussions regarding upcoming meeting on March 2nd. So, as of now, what is the stand with other countries too? So, that is mentioned in this article. So, in two areas, this particular session discussion will be there. When the G20 foreign ministers are aligning, then they will have discussions on two things. What are those two areas? Number one. So, the FFM. What is this FFM? Your foreign ministers meeting. So, this foreign ministers meeting of G20 will focus on two things. 
first thing will be before lunch and after lunch will be the second session. So, in the first session, it will focus on the themes of strengthening multilateralism. Same thing I told for the China too. So, they are going to work on multilateralism, then all other cooperation. Similar way here also on multilateralism, need for reforms, food and energy security, development cooperation. The second will be, that means the second session. So, first session will be on food, energy security, then any other reforms or multilateralism to work in geopolitics. So, all these will lead to your first one and the second one deals with your counter terrorism. So, this deals with your protection, security, globally assurance of global assurance of security. So, fighting against terrorism which is counter terrorism, new and emerging threats. So, that can be your cyber threats or any bio wars, what are the expected threats new and trending threats, then the global skill mapping, talent pool, so skill mapping all over the world, so recognizing your country's skills and humanitarian assistance, disaster relief, so all these areas and also India is the one of the first countries to react for disaster relief, so yeah, even regarding this humanitarian assistance, every place we will be focusing, okay, so that is about this article, so that is what they are going to discuss now and once the discussion is done, we will be getting Updates on that which we will be discussing later, okay, fine. Next, India Australia to sign agreement to mutual recognition of qualifications. So, many, many people, so I already told that India is one of the countries which has huge diaspora. So, Australia is one place where India is apart from western countries. So, India is migrating to, Indians migrating to western countries for their education. Australia also stands in the same line where people from India go to pursue into Australia. At the same time, Australian people will also be visiting. So, it is vice versa. So, currently, our countries, both education ministers are focusing on to extend the qualifications. That means, to recognize, suppose if I, if I, if I am a medical student, I wanted to do my MVBS. I have not qualified or I am not interested to do it in India. So, let us say I am going to Philippines. If I go to Philippines, if I get my MBBS degree, still the degree is not recognized until unless I pass an examination entrance test in the country, in my country. If, I, if at all I have to work in India, then I have to pass this particular entrance test to recognize my degree. But here, so in order to remove this issue, so if any degree passing in any place should be recognizable as long as they follow the same pattern same level. So, that is the case where Australia and India currently they are trying to work upon. So, here they have sp spoke about the NEP policy too. So, Australian education minister Jason Clare arrived in Delhi to leading a delegation of Australian higher education leaders to promote collaboration between the two countries. So, trying to work on equal lines with our country. So, the visit will be from February 28th to March 3rd again not required. So, they are going to meet with union education minister and discuss on the probability. So, is our union education minister Dharmendra Pradhan. Dharmendra Pradhan. So, to provide momentum of bilateral relations of domain education. So, currently he also told that India's national education policy has set a rising enrollment in a higher education and vocational education by 50 percent by 2025. So, he ensured that your NEP policy will be a great success. Because by 2035, the higher education, so your graduation or uh, higher education than graduation will be spiking up for more than 50 percent within 2035. So, even now you can see many of the graduates that are fleeing to abroad to ensure their higher education and settling well in their career. So, the same thing he speculated that almost 50 percent will be the rise of existing education and the genuine opportunity for Australian providers, education providers to collaborate with India. So, that is the exact reason why we need to collaborate with India so that whatever uh, the education that they are, uh, they are trying to attain in Australia will be recognized in India. So, this will ensure that our Indians will be going into Australia too. So, their education will also be given an equal standard with India. So, yeah, that is about this article nothing more than that. Next, portal opened for complaints against nations for social media platforms, cyber, cyber abuse or any other kind of, um, not cyber abuse to be frank, to be correct, precise, this deals with any kind of malicious content or any triggering content that is existing in social media, you can report in this particular portal of GSE. So, yeah, Ministry of Electronics, so mighty electronics and information technology, mighty is the nodal ministry for all these 
issues related to your cyberspace. So yeah, they have launched this grievance app appellate committee portal under IT rules 2021 allowing people dissatisfied with the resolution of complaints in social media companies to take content down requests. So whatever the content is they feel triggered and many of the people, so based on the level of or the percentage of people who has reported that particular post as triggering or malicious. So such kind of contents can be reported to GAC with which if it really goes against the IT rules, then definitely that particular content will be removed. For that, they have organized around three committee, three, uh, three committees. So one of the three committees suited by the government. So any of the three committees can address and specifically they haven't mentioned they are going to launch this particular Digital India Bill too, which will be again a place where people can ask or this will be what we can say a standard place or a statutory backup for this particular IT rules. So this particular bill will be going to be introduced soon. So we will be learning about that bill when it is in use. Okay, fine. When we got updates on digital bill. So information technology, intermediary guidelines and digital media ethics code rules 2021 can also be added in your ethics paper of mains. So in your GS4, media rights and code of conduct of media. In this you can add it. Okay, and also in your governance part. So what India is doing to protect it, its people in digital space. So there you can use this. So where amended last year requires social media companies to respect all the rights accorded to the citizens with respect to constitution under the articles 14, 19, 21. So right to equality, then your article 19 which is your freedom of speech and expressions, all these freedom rights, then your 21 which is your right to life. So all these three should be ensured. So with that, they have framed this IT rules and all the companies which are under using this social platform, they should comply with that, okay. And this will be your backup, statutory backup yet to be introduced. So once introduced, we will discuss, fine, next. Heat waves likely from March to May, IMD report. So yesterday also we have discussed one article on this heat wave. So I have already told that this particular year we have witnessed Lana, where we have witnessed huge or multiple times of occurrence of cold waves. So whenever there are a multiple sessions of Lanina, there is 50% chances of occurrence of El Nino. Okay. So if El Nino is not occurring, despite its non-occurrence, still the heat waves will be persistent in the country. So here IMD says that in months from March to May, the heat wave will be very crude, very, very crude or very cruel. So you need to understand that there will be huge occurrence, especially in most of northeastern part, eastern part, central India or northwestern India, almost every other part witness this particular above normal temperatures. Okay, fine. So yeah, temperature. In February, hit record levels of many parts of northwestern or northern India, 35 to 39 degrees. And Lalina conditions normal temperature. So, Lalina is below normal temperatures where you have adverse or uh, huge or cold, extreme cold conditions will be there in Lalina. So, which is triggering your heat waves in March and March to May months. Okay. So, that is about this article. Next one. Chandrayaan. So Chandrayaan 2 was done and Chandrayaan 3 was yet to be launched still the date has not been fixed. Yes. So currently uh, ISRO has successfully tested in Bangalore the third mission. So key testing of this third mission has been done. Nothing more mentioned here but what they have tested is the launch vehicle will have different sections right. So each propellant section will be there. Cryogenic section, cryogenic engine was will power a crucial stage for L LVM3 launch vehicle of Chandrayaan 3. So they have tested this particular launch vehicle with cryogenic technology and it was successful. So which is a crucial test. It was a 25 second test. Not much important but yeah. It is focusing on Chandrayaan 3. Chandrayaan 2 was sent and now Chandrayaan 3 will be sending. It will have three components which is your three major modules will be there. Propulsion, lander and rover modules. Three modules will be there in this particular rocket. Okay. So that will be launched in Satish Dhawan place. So rest all not required, we will go to another one. Another article related to your health. So this is about SN, uh, GS3, no? SNT. So this is also about, G, uh, about your GS3 only, SNT, 
defense part and this will come in your health okay health where cancer treatment will be eased up with proton beam therapy so whenever this cancer so what is this cancer it is a lump so cells which lost memory they'll fall a lump when it is, when cells are formed in different places where it doesn't work as the particular organ or in that particular place how other organs are not are working if this particular cells are not working in the same way they will form a lump of cells which is your cancer cells tumor or cancer so okay so this particular uh, cancer basically what will be the treatment radiotherapy so where your different let me show you yeah so what is this radiotherapy this radiation will be used in using x-rays so through x-rays they will try to remove this particular cells so they try to kill this particular cells but what happens during this process is wherever they are targeting through x-rays and they are trying to remove this tumor this x-rays will not only affect that particular place but also in and around other cells will also be affected and again it will further be like more chances will be there for it to persist so cancer will be occurring or it may attack some other cells too because of this x-rays will penetrate to some other parts of body so currently this proton therapy is something which precisely target the existing tumor it will not affect any other part only the particular targeted space will be targeted i mean that particular space it will target and that tumor can be eliminated and it will not show any other impact on other properly working cells okay so that is about this article cancer patients in india face twin challenges when it comes to accessing proton beam therapy not enough facilities offering the treatment and the cost running with lakhs of rupees so the issues with using this proton therapy in india is that first thing infrastructure so no enough facilities number two cost burden obviously so these both are the twin challenges for using this pbt which is your proton beam therapy it is considered as a viable alternative for radiation therapy which i have already told so yeah benefits i have already mentioned so people uh, that particular suppose if people with cancer who are, are affected so this has proven useful in the case of young women whose ovaries reproduce function cannot be salvaged through the therapy so through this particular therapy which was not functioning can also be able to so this can be saved basically so if cancer is being affected to this particular area suppose if it is affecting a, a, a ovary part it should be basically removed so now that particular places can be worked efficiently if this proton therapy is used so that is the level of pbt that is being mentioned and uh, currently in us they are effectively using it and in india it's still to be used so in us each unit of proton therapy can treat 7.9 billion that is a ratio so one proton to 7.9 million whereas here one one proton to 1412 people so lacking efficiency okay fine that is about this article next so today we have more articles so after this your other class will commence okay fine co sector output rose to 10 month high in january so you have eight core sectors iip so index of industrial production so eight eight particular sectors are there let me show what are those important So yeah, this eight core sectors uh, almost are nearly comprising of 40 percent, 27 percent, 40.27 percent of the weights of items in index of industrial production. So these weigh around 40 percent in your market. So what are these core industries? So yeah, these are electricity, steel, refinery products, crude oil, coal, cement, natural gas, and fertilizers. Now that article says that except crude oil, everything has seen rise. Why crude oil no rise? Because of war and our huge dependency on foreign countries for our crude oil. Okay. So yeah, this article says that 
So, output across 8, infra, eight infrastructure sectors expanded 7.8 percent accelerating from December 7 percent. So, by the end of, so every month end you will be getting all these details. So, as of now you need to understand that yes, almost every sector. So, I told that IIP accounts for almost 40 percent of the total industrial sectors and everything saw a rise. Core sectors output had grown to 4 percent in January. The second successive six month all core infrastructures except crude oil registered growth in output from earlier. So, compared to the previous year, sorry, compared to the previous quarter, this is a successive quarter where every other core, uh, core industry, core production industry index of industrial products have seen increase except crude oil. So, that is about this article where you can see 10 month higher which is up to 7.8 percent is the level of increase in production. Okay, fine. Next. So, each individual is not required, just in, uh, but the hierarchy again is important for your prelims. For you UPSC prelims, if you are attempting this year, go check the hierarchy of which particular industry in this sector occupies highest to the lowest. You need to know the hierarchy from descending order or ascending order, just follow it. Important. Next. Coming to fiscal deficit touch of 67.8 percent of financial year or fiscal year 23 target at the end of Jane, sorry, so January. So, currently CGA, I will tell you what is this first. So, central government fiscal deficit touched 67.8 percent of full year target at the end of January due to high expenses and the lower revenue realization because of the high expenses and lower inputs that means low incomes but high expenditure and what is fiscal deficit? Fiscal deficit is something which is expenditure minus your receipts or revenue. So, expenditure minus revenue except borrowings. So, except borrowings if you remove it then you will be getting your physical deficit and the target for the physical deficit for the for the year 22-23 given by encasing committee was 2.5 percent of GDP but the achieved or the, uh, through the budget of 2020, I am not talking about the current budget. Current budget physical deficit is 5.9 percent. This terms, these numbers are important. So, your 2022, 23, 2023, 24. So, this is current fiscal year, current one. So, the previous one you will be having your revised estimates for this. So, here you will be having budget estimates, okay, and then we are, you will be having actuals of the previous year, which is 21, 22. So, you will be having previous year, but I am not going to discuss about the previous year where you will be having actuals, okay, fine. So, currently the physical deficit targeted during this particular physical year was 6.4 percent, but actually by 2022-23 encasing committee has told that the physical, tar physical deficit target should be 2.5 percent by 22-23, but currently what was the target? I mean what was actually 6.4 percent, okay. So, for this physical year it is 5.9 percent which is your FD, okay, fine. So, what this article says is that by January, so still we have two quarters to end this particular fiscal year. So, by end of March this fiscal year will be completed. Next fiscal year starts with April. So, currently they say that 67.8 percent of the physical deficit has been achieved. So, has been ended that means that much level of borrowings we have done compared to the previous year which was 58, 58.9. So, by the end of January in the previous year, we have reached the physical deficit of 58.9 percent. So, our borrowings were only around 58.9 percent, whereas this year it stood around 67.8 percent. Why? Because of lower income. So, if you would see how the 68 percent came, let us go to the website and let us see real quick. So, your controller general of accounts is the one who has given this. Every month this will be updated, this portal will be updated with the actuals of or with the revised estimates of your physical deficit, all the other deficits. So, I am going to just a moment. 
year. I am going to monthly accounts of Jan 20 to 23. Okay. So, if you can see the governments or government of India, union government accounts at a glance by the end of Jan 2023. So, by the end of Jan 2023, see the physical deficit. Physical, fiscal deficit. How much is it? This is in crores. So, 17.55 lakh crores or 17,55,319 lakh crores. This is our fiscal deficit. What is it? Your revised estimates of 22-23. And what is actuals up to Jan? So, up the month of January till the month of January. Currently, what was this? 11.90805 is your fiscal deficit. So, how is this fiscal deficit calculated? Go to the revenue expenditure. How much is revenue expenditure? 345964 is your revenue expenditure. What is your revenue total receipts? Just a moment. This is one, no? So, your total expenditure and revenue, your total expenditure you have to consider and total receipts you need to consider, which is your 12 minus 7. So, what is your 12th? Total expenditure is 4187232 minus, what is this? Total receipts, 2431913. Help me with this. What is the value? Calculate and tell me the value. Is it the same one? All in students. The same thing. This would be actual your revised estimates for 20 to 23 is your physical deficit. And how much is currently by the end of Jan? It is 11.9 lakh crore is the achieved one which is 67.8 percent whereas in the previous fiscal year for the same month span it was 58.9 percent. So, why is it more for that this government has stated that this CG has told that it is because of lack of revenues at the same time huge expenditure. Okay. So, that is about this article. So, in depth you will be discussing in your economy class I do not want to go into basics. Okay. I have already spent a lot of time on this. So, they have told here that the physical deficit compared to the previous 21-22 is 58.9. That is what we have seen in the Control General website of India. So, that is a revised estimate and for the year 22-23, the government expects the physical deficit of 17.55 lakh crore or 6.4 percent of your GDP. And now, this fiscal year it is 5.9 percent which is the target. Okay, fine. But how much it should actually be as part of your encasing committee? 2.5 percent is actually recommended. That too by the end of 20 to 23. Next, we have another three articles today. We have a lot of articles to discuss. Sorry for that. Yeah. Next. Fine. So, yeah. Coming to this article, 610, the number of lions and leopards that died in Gujarat. I hope this is clear. So, 610 are the total lions and leopards that have been died in Gujarat for this last two years. Important for your environment. So, when you are stating about any project, like project tiger or something, the environmental concern if you wanted to mention, you can add this. 140 deaths were due to unnatural causes and getting hit by vehicles or something. So, anthropogenic causes were 140 and also 23 out of 240 lions were cubs. So, they are newly born. And as per the census, 2020 Gujarat is a home for 674 Asiatic lions. The state is world's last abode of Asiatic lions. So, this Asiatic lions is the last state which has the population and in that 16 already died for this two years. Okay. Next. On regulations of online sales of drugs in India. So, what is a gist I will be giving you? The rest all will not be discussing much. Yeah. So, currently during pandemic, it has given a push that even your pharmacies or whatever the medication that you want, people started purchasing it on online. 
through e-commerce websites or through any other websites. So, here the terms used is, terms which they have used here which is important is, again your e-pharmacies, e-pharmacies is something where you can buy your products or medical products online which is your e-products through digital means whatever the platform may be. And what is the word called mom and pop chemist shops, mom and pop chemist shops. So, these are like petty shops or small shops which are restricted to only particular place, it does not have any brands. Say, take example of Apollo, it is spread all over India. So, it is famous, so it does not come under mom and poppy shop, pop shops. Some shops which is nearby local medical shops where you purchase at least like small medical products, even these particular shops have pushed themselves to sell online. So, now main issue here is that when they are trying to sell online, especially youth and uh, people of youngsters age, so they are trying to purchase these drugs. Drug usage, drug abuse has increased hugely post pandemic. So, now that is the issue and that and there is a facility for this e-pharmacies that they can even order through WhatsApp and that can be delivered directly to home. So, currently in early February the Ministry of Health, so who is again focusing here the nodal ministry is Ministry of Health. So, they have pulled at least 20 companies including Tata, 1MG, Flipkart, Apollo, Pharmacy. How easy then your Amazon Reliance Netmates by issuing show cause notice for selling medicines, medicines online. So, they have given the show cause notices. So, only certain medicines you can sell. Even um, with the medication you, you, you need to have certain rules and regulations right. Like this medication should be produced and then they have to be sold online. You cannot sell directly over the counter. So, over the counter you cannot sell your all the medications. There are certain uh, list which can be sold like that. So, for that they have issued show cause notices. So, yeah, draft e-pharmacy rules will be floated by the, uh, were floated by ministry in 2019. So, it is only draft, not, did not come yet. So, the rules were finalized, public comments were taken into consideration as they were almost in the brink of being notified, but the proposal was abruptly showed due to cold storage. So, because of the lack of infrastructure, this is still under pending, okay. Fine. Next, stiff competition has forced mom and pop shop pharmacies to also offer home delivery options to their customers introducing their own store apps. They even give customers options to medicines or online or through WhatsApp. So, currently uh, this mom and pop shops are small shops which cannot be regulated well. Suppose let us say Apollo, we can regulate it right like what are they being sold. So, you have a proper database. What about this mom and pop shops where they try to sell and you do not even know what is the expiry date properly. Some goods are they really reliable source, we do not know. So, what happened is these petty shops are also coming into online and they are trying to deliver with their own apps. Suppose if there is any particular uh, shop, if I have their number, then I can send a WhatsApp of this particular medicine, then they will be delivering it online. So, there is no proper regulations on what should be delivered and what should not be there because of which drug abuse increased. So, currently they are planning for a particular law. So, that this entire article is about the issues only. No other uh, mention about what can be the alternatives. So, they are still working on that. Yeah, that is about this article, nothing more. Next, RBI is a new pilot project on coin vending machines. Coin vending machines. Now, you have a ATM. If I wanted to draw anything from ATM, so draw money from ATM, what I will go? I will go to the ATM vending machine. I will just put my card and I will draw my money in notes. Bank notes will be issued. So, this coin vending machines are something which will be giving you coins. So, currently what was the issue is suppose if I go, uh, if we go to any public transport facilities or anything or even if you go purchase any, any, any good if it is around 62 or 63 rupees let us say. Then we will be giving how much or if it is let us say 68 rupees, 70 rupees will be giving no change. So, the issue is the circulation of this rupee, uh, the coins has been decreased drastically and because of this again the other issue is that lot of coins are being left over in RBA too. So, people are going cashless first thing, second thing if there is any 2 or 3 rupees amount that needs to be transacted, people are leaving it. So, you only take it. So, you are currently and one more question that I have, can you tell what is the least uh, rupee or least coin that can that is still acceptable in India, least coin, least coin. Online students tell me anyone what is the least uh, value, least value of currency that is still acceptable in the country. Anyone will you try? Online anyone will you try? 
someone hand raised who has hand raised chitan atre please um, i mean if you have any issue you can tell me else you can leave their hand raised yes 50 pais kritika correct yes it's 50 pais so 50 pais is still acceptable if you go to shop if they say the 50 pais is not acceptable no it is also acceptable in the country and till 50 pais it is called yeah till 50 pais uh, it is called as small coins and while those of 1 rupee and above are called rupee coins need to know okay fine yes burhan correct so currently this particular article says that yes they are trying to come up and this was the decision taken in the last previous monetary policy so monetary committee delhi monetary policy committee so they have come up with a decision that is yes, this apex banking regulator in collaboration with banks would be launching a pilot project to access the qr code based coin vending machine so you will be scanning a qr code similar to your digital transactions only if you do that you will get your coins into hand which you can use it for circulation so yeah in simple words vending machines dispense coins with a requisite amount debited by the customer's account through upi so here again what they are using upi qr codes UPI, which is unified, sorry, uh, yeah, United Payments interface. They are trying to use it instead of physical tendering of bank notes. That means if you put bank notes into the uh, into the vending machine, then you will be able to get your coins. So this is actual perspective of people. But no, here they are trying to merge technology with again offline value of currency. So what they are trying to do, you will be scanning with your UPI, then you will be receiving your rupees, what your coins basically. Okay, not your bank notes. So customer will be endowed with the option of withdrawing coins if required quantities or denomination. So based on the amount, they will be retaining. So if you want five rupee coins, if you want one rupee coins, you can select, and that many coins will be given to you. So yeah, on the supply side, Ravi Shankar has told that it has stated uh, with respect to peculiar was the supply being very high. So the situation of coins was peculiar with the supply being very high. It is taking a lot of. Yeah, it is taking a lot of storage space as it is not getting properly distributed. At the same time, there is demand in pockets. So they have told that uh, two issues they have mentioned for which they try to or uh, they are trying to launch this particular coin vending machine. Number one, first one is that now because of this lack of circulation of the coins, it is being lumped up in RBI. So in banks, not only RBI in banks. Second thing is that people are in requirement. Certain people they are in requirement. Suppose if I don't have change, then I have to. I have an, I have an obligation that I have to give them full amount, right? So now there is a demand from demand from customer end. At the same time, demand from supply end too. So mutually we have demand. So we are trying to do that. So we have demand. We have we need to get this supply matched. So that is about this article. Okay, fine. Next. So all the circulations again not required. Next, so this is the last article which I would like to discuss. India should stick on the middle path, and nothing more is there. Just I'll give you a gist. So India should stick to the middle path. The new world disorder. So this is a like just an article where a person opinion has spoke about. So a person has opinionized on what can be the possibilities of India's foreign policy now. So we already had. Lot of foreign policies from the beginning. So earlier we used to have a closed economy where we were not allowing any kind of foreign trades into the country. So we are mostly closed economy, and we had relationship with Soviet Union, then Russia, and after the disintegration, then uh, we have opened our markets, and then we have foreign policy has actually came into picture. Not during the not after the independence, but actually after LPG reforms, we can clearly mention that our foreign policy has increased. Okay. Totally, of course, we had different war situations. All these foreign policies were there. Despite that, our trade kind of relations in foreign policy has started from 91. So here, the issue is that recently there was one article in the previous week stating that France was asking India to have its vote casted in UNGA summit. So in United Nations General Assembly against Russia, France and other European countries, uh, not only France, other European countries were also forcing India that please take a stand. Don't be in the mid path. so it is crucial to india to take a stand so that russia would also be having certain thought a reconsideration of this existing war but india again abstain from this it was dated during 31st may so not now but during that time india has abstained this particular so recently it has abstained but still condemned so we told that yes we are not in support of war at the same time we cannot cast our vote against russia because we are all time friends 
So yeah, that's about this article and here they say that this particular person Stanley Johnny has told that it is high time that India should actually follow this particular mid path and it should have a positive relation with all the other countries. Now we cannot take a stand, individual stand on either uh, western countries or with USA or with Russia. We have, we also see that the growing footprint of China is there, especially during cold war it was the case where we have western bloc and eastern bloc where we have followed our non-alignment policy. NAM was a huge success back then. Now the non-alignment policy should be continued. He says that the China is again growing economy. It is growing its footprint all over the world. Now it is high time for India to maintain all the positive relationship with other countries to ensure its stability in the global arena. Entire article is about that. So you can just go through historical constraints they have mentioned. What was the stake during Cold War? What was the CENTO? What was CETO? All these things important for your world history and also your international relations. Please go through the article. That's it for today's session. Thank you. If you if at all you have any doubts, you can post now. I will wait for another one more minute. You can tell me. Else we can wind up the session and next session will commence. Ma'am, could you please tell me if we are going to have current affairs session regularly at 9.15 from today. Kritika will be having regularly from 9 o'clock from today. I mean from tomorrow. Exactly at 9 o'clock your session will start. So earlier we had from 3 to 4 but uh, we talk, we are not shifting it from the morning because morning if we start the day with current affairs it will be good, right. So your current affairs part will be done and later on your other sessions will commence. So we thought in that way. So we will be having session every day at 9 to 10, maximum your class will start at 9, 10, like that is the up, like upper limit for your session to commence, okay. Thank you, thank you for the, for the session, good day. So we will meet again, thank you. Oh, thank you, Burhan. Thank you. Yes, it will be very helpful if it is in morning. That is why we have thought that we will be having the session on morning. Yeah. Thank you.